Oh. Line two, you're live on Talk Sport. Hello. Oh, oh God, hi, Tori. Hey. Yeah, hi there. Um, called you earlier. I promise this is the last time I'm going to phone you, mate. But some of your callers, have, uh, a couple of your callers at least have suggested that uh, you haven't answered my questions or anything earlier on this evening. So uh, I'm not going to give you the opportunity to answer the same questions again. But what I want to do finally, and I promise you, I'm not going to phone you again. I want you to leave your radio show. He's really boring, this guy, isn't he? He is. I, 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 some of the nutcases are, 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 aren't as sad as this guy. <laughs> you don't like being cruel, do you, Paul? You're such a nice man. But, I mean, he's a serious... I'm exasperated. No, I'm not exasperated. He's a really sad man. He's got nothing, nothing in his life except trying desperately to be annoying, and he can't do it. You compare the panache and the wit of the voodoo man with this unfortunate Scotsman. Um, and, you know, it's just... It's not light and shade, because shade has some depth. But this fella... Is he still going on? Are you still going on? No, I'm just waiting on you stopping, Tommy. Well, um, I'm... I'm, I'm I, keep it interesting, can you? This is the art of it. Can you well, keep it interesting? Well, the point is, Tommy, at least two of your callers have suggested that I come back, back on. No, no, and, uh, and repeating yourself uh, No, I just said to you that I wasn't repeating myself, Tommy. Can you lift it? Look, look. Your problem is you're boring. Yeah, I know I'm boring. Ah, uh, well, then go away and, and bore another radio station. It must be awful to be boring. I've never known what it's like. Uh, have you? Uh, no. No, well said. That was nice and dead. Live on Talk Sport. Hello. Yeah, hello, Tommy. It's, um, it's Rob. I was just wondering if you can uh, pick your brains for a minute and think where you're playing my mind. Um, three people in a restaurant. Okay. Hello? Yes. Sorry, yeah, three nice. people in a restaurant. Yeah. They all um, had a set meal of £10. Yeah. And... Uh, the waiter comes over, collects ten pounds from each person. Yeah, sort of joke, by the way. No, um, no, no. That, I, that's been rattling around in my mind for forty years or so. This one. Oh, have you heard it? Have you? Well, yes, pretty so. It's a good one, isn't it? Well, yeah, yes, so, it is. I, I don't the, know the, the answer. The, the waiter comes along, yes. collects the ten pounds from each person, yes. and yes. takes it to the cashier. Yes, yes, and the cashier says, um, yeah. "Oh, I'm pretty good today. Give them five pounds back." So he's taken the five pounds back to the uh, three people, and he thinks. Yes. Well, how can they divide five pounds? So I'll put two pounds in my pocket yeah. and I'll give them a pound each. That's, that's three pounds. That's 27 pounds. So that's three nines, 27 pounds. Two pounds in his pocket. Two pounds in his pocket. Yeah. 29 pounds. That's it. Where's the other quid gone? So where's that pound gone? All I will say is that if you do say that to some people, they'll get very frustrated with it and they'll go, Well, whoa! Uh, Sorry. That, they'll go, oh, that bit, that's it, that you're simply looking at it from the wrong point of view, but then they can't We're, we're in a pub, and we, we even had to order bar mates yeah. out, you know, trying yeah. to add it, well, it's, it's crazy. Well, I presented it on the radio uh, uh, some time back as being, um, I, I made something up, and I said it was something like uh, Schwarzkopf's fundamental flaw in mathematics, and I used that to illustrate it. Mm. And I said, you know, this, the fact that there is a fundamental flaw in basic mathematics Will this, mean, will this mean planes would drop out of the sky? Absolutely. It proved that one day, you know, the universe will collapse. Exactly. It's just a, there's a hole yeah. in mass. That's what I proved. Well, Schwarzkopf did. Yeah. You know. And people fell for it. I didn't realise it was um, the old. You, but you know everything, don't you? You know all jokes. And... I virtually know everything, yeah. Mm. What do you want to know? Um, well, I just want to know the answer to that, really. <laughs> well, there isn't one, is there? No. Well, so some people would try to, but it's beyond me. Yeah. It's beyond me. Yeah. But, uh, that's it, okay. All right. But there's enough to plan my mind for more then. Well, you've got £25 in the till, £2 in the guy's pocket, and £3 in the punter's pocket. Yeah. That's 30 isn't it? Yeah, but that's, that's working it backwards, isn't it? No, working no, no, that's, that's working it the same way, dealing mm. with where, where the money actually is. Yeah, but it still doesn't take away the fact that these people are paid £9 each. And that's t that's twenty seven pounds they've paid, mm. and that's two pounds in the pocket. So that's still only twenty nine, isn't it? Mm. They've paid twenty five. 
But they paid nine pounds each. No, they paid twenty five. But nine pounds each. If you were if you were having that meal, yes. you would have paid nine pounds, wouldn't you? Yes. And there's three of them. Yes. Twenty seven. They've handed over twenty seven. <laughs> isn't it? How long have you been listening this evening? Since 10 o'clock last night. Nine hours? If I come back as somebody else. Mm. Uh, of course, my answer was me, because I'm reasonably happy being me. Uh, but having some deep thought about it, um, not one of your normal, usual thing. I'd like to go a bit more futuristic. Mm -hmm. Like somebody like um, that guy off Star Trek, Mr. Picard. Wouldn't that be a great life? Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Come back, uh, I'd want to further my relationship with Councillor Troy if I was Captain Picard, though. Yes, now that would be a very interesting one. Oh, baby! Yes. She is a fine <laughs> creature, isn't she? What about her that was uh, bold? Can you remember her? Oh, what? That um, was from one of the films. Yeah. What's her name? Oh, can't remember. Oh, yes. uh, if you shut up, I'll remember it. She's in Cheers. Oh, well, you can talk now. What's the girl's name in Cheers who was bald in Star Trek? I didn't even know she, she plays was in Rebecca. Cheers. In Cheers? Yes. Her? Is yes. that who you're talking about? Yes, I do believe it is. Yes. Very tasty. Oh, we should certainly. Let's drink to her, shall we? We certainly will. Cheers. To the unknown woman. To the unknown woman. To the, the tomb to the of the unknown woman. woman. I'd go there, wouldn't you? I'd <laughs> kneel at the tomb of the unknown yes. I would lay a wreath. <laughs> yes, we would definitely lay a wreath. the tomb <laughs> of the <laughs> unknown Just don't bird. Just feel that. <laughs> the unknown woman. But uh, ah. getting, getting back to it, what? obviously you yourself have had uh, an interesting life, according to what I hear, if I, all that I hear. It's all uh, true. It is all what, true. What would you, what would, who would you like to come back as? John Lennon. Line six. Good morning, you're live on Talk Sport. Yeah, morning. I'm just going to talk to somebody. He listened to him yesterday. He was playing out about uh, ridiculous people with religious beliefs. Well, you are talking to Tommy. You're live on air, straight through. Okay. Screenless show. Yeah, I'm looking at, uh, listening to you yesterday, yep. I'm just wondering why you put, pull people down for their religious beliefs. Mm, don't, that's not what I do, that's what you heard, but that's your problem, that's not what I do. No, I'm not, I'm not saying the problem, I'm just saying, uh, do you have any beliefs on spiritualism? Do, could you say that more clearly for me? Spiritualism. Spiritualism? Yeah. It you depends what, well, it depends what you mean by spiritualism, because I've always found everybody means something, everybody means, understands it differently. Well, I've been to the Spiritualist Church, uh, National Spiritualist Union Church, and people have been there that I didn't even know before I went in there. And that often a, happens when you go to new places. Yeah, um, but they came up and they came to me and told me things about my family, my relatives that had, that had died and things that had happened. Do you think that's coincidence or... Is there something... I'm not prepared to, to, to go one way or the other on what you've told me. My, my, my wife had something happen to, to her, which involved a spiritualist, which she says impressed her, and my, my, I like my wife enough to give it another 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not going to deny or categorise it in any way, shape or form? Well, I don't really, again, I, like I said, I don't really know what you're talking about, and, and maybe you don't, and maybe the people who are involved in what you're talking about don't really know what they're talking about and that's because 99 percent of life is a mystery anyway despite the science and religion and the fanatics who attach themselves to it um, i prefer to think of it as a mystery happy to to do that and concentrate on the things i can fully understand like football cool yeah but okay let's take taking football yes now with the <laughs> events that happened last week well this week in turkey Surely you have to know that the Galatasaray fans were as bad as they are because Manchester United have been through it, Chelsea have been through it. Why wouldn't they play the neutral ground beforehand? Why didn't they turn around and say, hang on, we can't send anybody else in there, we'll play it neutral or ban them completely? Because the Galatasaray fans have not, up to that point, and as far as we know, did not on that occasion behave in such a way that made them particularly worse 
and some English fans you could name in the past, some of the Dutch fans, who yeah. are also notorious for their behaviour, and the... on occasions, some German fans too. So, has that answered your question? Yeah. Well, in fact, it has answered your question very well, hasn't it? It has, yes. Yes, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom, very much. Not at all. You're out, Maggie. It's absolutely unbelievable. There are nightmares. What you do is you get a pair of household gloves and blue sandpaper to the fingers. Oh, I'll give that a go then. Fisherman's Blues, this morning from six on Talk Sport. Yeah, and we're with Nicole, who rang to Hi. talk about stalking, but really, I think you're talking about excessively clingy exes in your case, aren't you? And I think the two things. Are connected. Well, do you want to know? Are yeah. connected, but they're different. No, I don't really want to know. Not no, the it's police different. Room. Thing. Not the yeah. police were involved. But it, how no, long you did... don't want to know. No, I don't. How long ago did it happen? How long for? How long ago? Um, uh, six months. Well, my only concern in it all, really, is that six months is probably long enough, if it has gone to bed, for you to be able to move on from it. And yet, it's obviously still high in your mind. Well, the person involved was committed. Hmm. Didn't just kind of go away, sort of like, you know, mm. uh, I'm, I'm sick of you now, or I've mm. like found a new object or desire to like boil bunnies, etc. But, um, this, you know, this person was committed. Mm. And it's just, you know, um, kind of living your life in fear when you've, you know, the person knew so much where you live, your friends, where you work, exactly. It just makes yeah. you very untrusting in people. And I just wondered, you know, because I've never met anybody else. I thought, you know, maybe phone in and see if it ever happened to anybody you knew, which was, like, scary, in a sense. Mm. Yeah, pretty much everything happens to pretty much everybody. That's uh, one of the great things about modern life, Nicole. We all get to know almost too much about almost everybody. Shows like this, um, newspapers, uh, the internet. Yeah. Um, the, 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 what these things mean is that we're all opening up our lives to everybody else. Well, we know more about complete strangers now than people used to know about themselves. Yeah, I agree. Just 30 or 40 years ago. And I think it has to... I, I think ultimately it's very, very healthy. Very good. I've always, I've always said that I would be prepared to tell anybody anything about myself. Oh, yeah. It's not a, I guess except, you know, um, you've got to open, judge it yeah. right. Because there's, there's certain things which are simply true, mm -hmm. but uh, would nevertheless be judged as dark or malevolent. Yeah. By, by folk who didn't understand the purpose of the exercise, which is love. Mm -hmm. The love that you only get by total sharing. Oh, yeah, I completely agree with you and everything in that. It's just when it gets to the scary stage and you feel like you can't go out or you're scared of what they say to your friends or anything like that, you know, mm. or they're standing inside your home, you know. Mm. Well, w where do you live, Ish? Glasgow area. Okay. Uh, and how, were you born there? Huh? Yep. And what age would you be now? I'm 22. Get the hell out. I know, I'm going to. Go. Not, 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 not so much to leave Glasgow, but because you must visit the world. And I'm not talking about Torremolinos or Ibiza here. Oh, I don't go there. No, but you need to, you, you do need to stand and, and wonder about whether you're going to catch the Greyhound bus or hitch the next bit of your journey across America. You do need to wonder whether you're going to take that excursion to Ayers Rock or have another few days on Bondi Beach in Australia. You do need to decide whether or not you're going to go up country into the rice fields or down to where the tourists' paradises are when you're in Asia. You do need to decide whether the elephants are that interesting when you're in Africa. Mm -hmm. You've got to do these things, and you've got to do them whilst you've got all your powers that you've got now of youth and hope and, and the ability to learn and make good sense of the things you'll learn so that you've got a big life in front of you during which you can use what you've learned. So you've got to put that past thing so far and much behind you that when you come back, you won't even remember it. I know, I know. I, I, uh, you're so sweet. That's so nice, by the way. We're all sitting here all so sweet. That's you're so nice. Gonna, you're you're gonna, gonna, are you going to do it? Yeah, of course I'm going to do, do it. Please do it. Please do it. I think the postcard from where we end up. Even if you come back to Glasgow, and of course, you know what they say, um, let your children go and every path they take will lead back to you. Um, even if you come back to Glasgow, you, the stuff that you'll bring, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll light the city at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. That's so nice. I'll let you get on to your... Uh, 
people who phone and play on their touchstone phones. Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, everyone's got their own way of saying... Of expressing their feelings. Ev listen, everyone's got their, their own way of making their message known. But everybody's message is help, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Help. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. What a nice lady. I wish I was 24 again. No, I don't really. Bored. He's planted rice in the paddy fields of Thailand. He's seen the sun rise from the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. He's meditated within the ancient walls of Machu Picchu. He's got a Renault Turbo Sport and a TVR. He's got a huge bank balance. He could go out with any woman in the country. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a close personal friend of his family. He's been invited to the Prime Minister's house for drinks. He's the closest thing on earth to the angel Gabriel. He's Tommy Boyd. The BBC's royal correspondent. I've always liked her, and she's wearing a powder blue two-piece. It she smells of powder and lipstick. Uh, she's very dapper, and she's down on a stage, picked out in a spotlight, and she's singing "Happy Birthday to Me" in the way that Monroe did to JFK. For ten seconds, as we go absolutely screenless, and invite simply whoever is there into our trust, as we say. Line six, you're live on Talk Sport. Good morning. Okay, cool, not bad, not bad. Line five, you're live on Talk Sport. You love Timmy Malik. Line four, well. Line Hello. three, you're live on Talk Sport. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Please yes. excuse my voice. I've got a nasty cough and cold, but I'll give it a go anyway. I've been listening to your show for weeks now, and you're still a load of crap! <laughs> you don't know where you've got the audacity to take a paycheck off your bloody <laughs> It's a fat one, pal. It's a fat one. It's a huge one. I get, I get, I get more for an hour of this than you get for a week of trawling around the country in a lousy, greasy, smelly lorry, cutting up little old ladies in their Morris Minors, and knocking cyclists off the road, and generally annoying absolutely everybody in the transport car by coming out with dull phrases like, call that a greasy spoon, I'll show you a greasy spoon, and whilst you're about it, you've got a nasty cough. Have you ever heard anybody say they've got a nice cough? You know what you are? You are completely redundant, not only when it comes to speech, but when it comes to work. You're a half wit. You're not even a half wit. You're a quarter wit. In decimal, you're a 0.25 wit. What are you? I'll see you later, Tommy. Bye. Good man. Excellent workout. Question three in this evening's uh, taboo. To question any individual about anything that that individual feels is precious to them. Yeah, but to leave aside the individual and look at... at um, Why do that? Well, I mean, I'm interested in, in, in uh, the, that old Tony Bennett cliche, shoes. And I'm not interested in no? cliches at all. I'm interested in original thought. Yeah. I'm just telling you that there is a greater taboo to question than the likelihood of the Holocaust. And it is to question any man, anything about any other person. They'll really get pissed off. Mm. Much more. You know, do you really, I mean, there are people. There are people who are connected with people 
who were connected with the Holocaust, yeah. who are driven to the depths of despair by those who say it might never have happened or it didn't happen on the scale that it's been reported. And that's entirely understandable. But it's just another thing in the papers for the majority of the world's population, if it's even that. They've probably never heard of it in China. And it's certainly just another event in history to the people in Africa and the subcontinent. But I rest my case that wherever you go around on planet Earth, where there are four billion people, all of whom matter as much as next, to question anything in any other man is the ultimate taboo. So if you multiply that by four billion, then you've got yourself a taboo which is much greater than questioning the Holocaust. If you simply compound the taboo. Yep. Uh, would you be interested? <laughs> yep. Would you be interested in uh, you know the major American publisher Little Brown? Well, go on, go on, go yeah. on. Doesn't um, matter whether I do or don't. Yeah, it, it, just, it just so happened I've got a, a, a one of their recent books about the Second World War, and on the back cover, to quote, more than nine million Germans. Soldiers, civilians died as a result of Allied starvation and expulsion policies in the five years after the Second World War. Would that surprise you? No. Nine million? Not at all. Well, we don't hear much about it, do we? No. Why do you think that is? Well, it's a good question. Well, I asked it. So why do you think it is? Um, Anti-German sentiment. That was one of the reasons that apparently... Is this going somewhere or are we just chewing the fat generally here? Well, this is relevant. We're talking about an even greater... Relevant to what? If you just sort of... Well, it's relevant to the last week and, and Irving. The question of this, this um, atrocity against the German people ordered by General Eisenhower. Well, it's relevant in terms of chronology and geography. But you have to make it ultra relevant by actually um, articulating the juxtaposition. Well, the juxtaposition is that we everybody knows about the uh, the Holocaust affecting six million Jews, but very few people, I would imagine, certainly professional historians, have tended to shy away from this research which this Canadian chap came up with um, over a decade ago. Yeah, it's quite famous. It's quite well known. It's not terribly well documented. It's largely an estimate. It's one man's work. There are enough intelligent, caring people alive today in Germany to provide sufficient substance to such a, uh, a suggestion, if it deserves it, for us to take it with, not a pinch of salt, but uh, for us to give it the perspective of a Canadian historian <laughs> operating at a considerable distance and seeking to ask questions rather than provide answers. And it was he's probably that kind of a historian. So you would you would go with the the general view of professional historians, which is not, and to dismiss his uh, researches in the uh, Russian archives. I'm where... saying what I've said and mm. I don't like it when people tell me what I'm saying. I really don't like that. So you've heard what I've got to say, and that's all I'm saying. Don't tell me what I'm mm. doing and going with and where, where, what well, I think. I'm, yeah, I'm, if you're interested, and why should you be? So you, you're aware of this, this particular chap, are you, this Canadian fellow? As I said. Mm. Um, you may have, over a decade ago, BBC Two made a documentary about his researches. Perhaps you'll vaguely recall that. Yeah, where, where is this going? I, I want you to nail yourself down a point here. I want you to say what you think about whoever you think things about and whatever you think things about, and then we know where, what we've got. Well, I mean, it's a question of, of getting things into perspective. We, you know, this, this apparent um, crime against the German people after the end of the Second World War is very much neglected, and uh, professional historians 
have uh, poo pooed his researchers. They haven't done the research themselves. That's the point. That, and that is, in fact, uh, he's written two books on this subject, and the one I've got yeah, to put to me. Look, look, look. What happened after the Second World War in Germany almost certainly happened in, in, in the Soviet Union as well. Almost certainly ha was happening at the same time in China and in parts of Africa. It was, it was, it was, it was famine, starvation, poverty, uh, disease brought on by, by lack of, by, by poor conditions. And this is something that has happened to humanity in large quantities about every 10 or 15 years somewhere on planet Earth, whether it's man-made or climatic or circumstantial. It's happened over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And it will happen again over and over and over and over and over, won't it? No, but um, that is not what happened. We're not talking about uh, uh, um, just the normal kind of run-of-the-mill starvation. Which yes, happened. we are. That's no, precise, we're not. That, that is precisely what we're talking about. We are talking about a country that had been ravaged by the Allies, ravaged by war, who had no social infrastructure, who had no health service, who had hardly any clean water, who until the peace had been fully settled, had no agriculture, who, who, who couldn't feed, clothe, or keep warm. The vulnerable. And there was great loss of life. And it's happened before and it will happen again be wherever there's war so you're you're re rejecting the, the uh... do not tell me what i'm doing okay what well, i'm telling you is what i what you need to do is get into the head of historians the holocaust has never happened on that scale before and as a consequence it merits much greater analysis and criticism than what may have been an equally tragic loss of life in post-war Germany, or may not, because the factors which brought that about are known and understood, but the factors which brought about the rise of the Third Reich in Germany and sustained the Third Reich in Germany are unique in human history. That's why you'll get more analysis of that than what happened in Germany after the war. Do you see that point? Well, I think you're, you're, you're absolutely wrong. You, you, you're, I mean, for a start, you cannot compare the numbers who died under Hitler to the numbers who died under Mao Zedong and the numbers who died under Stalin. All right, whatever you think. You think what you think. Off you go. Bye-bye. I said bye-bye. Well, I'm not saying bye-bye necessarily. Yes, you are. You're well, saying necessarily bye-bye. You, you've got to... Uh, no, 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 you've got to go. No, you've got to distance no, yourself. No, 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 you, you've got to go. I'm sorry, but you've got to go. Bye-bye. You've got to distance yourself from professional No, 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 you've got to, you've got to go. Bye-bye. Because you're not very good at having a conversation. Because you're not listening to a word I'm saying. You're taking the line of professional historians. No, I'm not. You're, no, I'm not, I'm not you're, 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 you're not listening to me. That's I'm, the problem. You're well, not listening to me. You're you're, you're, just, you're, no, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're just telling me what you want me to say so that you can have the argument you want. Well, it doesn't work like that. Well, you haven't had this argument before. I've had it millions of times. Not with this, this aspect of the German suffering. Loads of times, all really? over the place, everywhere I've ever been. Oh, I see. Yes, you do. You heard that bit, didn't you? Because it was rubbish. <laughs> what, what was rubbish? What I just said. Yeah. And that made you listen. That's the first time you've listened in this conversation. I've listened to every word you say. No, you haven't, sir. What, you would I'm be, telling you, you haven't. You have the exact same response to the professional historian. So, because, I mean, I, I have no idea of what David Irving has ever written. I don't have any of his books. But I have one or two, including this Canadian chap. And he, he documents how... How many books have you got all together? Oh, about 800. Certainly not, not only, very few about the Second World War. Oh, I still don't know what, quite what your point is. I'm still really, I'd love to know what your point is, but it's just that you, you, 
you can't make it. Is that because you're embarrassed by what it might sound like if you were to actually, actually say what you want to say? Uh, or well, don't, don't you well, really know? There's no, absolutely nothing I could say that I would be embarrassed about. Well, say it then. Well, there, there is, there is, um, there is no point about Irving that I have to say, except the fact that, quite right, that we've had a lot of media exposure. But we didn't have a lot of media exposure about a libel trial only the previous month involving Northern Ireland. Now you're off on a tangent now. Now, it is a tangent, total tangent. No, you're not very good. Let me refer you to the classic newspaper technique for writing articles. It's called the pyramid technique, right? In which you say absolutely everything that you are going to say in your very first sentence. I.e. A man has bitten a dog. That's it. So that's your first sentence. Your second sentence then simply expands on some of the information in your first sentence. The man, a 43-year-old post office worker from Gwent, um, is recovering in hospital. That's your second paragraph, because it's expanded on your point. And you read the point, and you don't actually have to read the article, because you've got it. A man has bitten a dog, or whatever. And then your third paragraph, the, the dog, Fido, a nine-year-old Rottweiler, blah de blah okay? But if you haven't got the point at the beginning of the thing, then, well, you're lost. And you carry on reading sometimes in the hope that you're going to get it right at the end as a kind of a punchline or a payoff, which is very unsatisfactory. But when you don't get the point at the beginning or the end, then all you've got is a series of unconnected, fa apparently unconnected facts. So supposing you were to read a newspaper article, or indeed hear a report on the radio, somebody says, a man, a 43-year-old po postal worker called Ken, is recovering in hospital. Oh, really? A dog, a seven-year-old Rottweiler called Bobby, is currently pending his future at the vet's. You go, oh, really? It happened at four o'clock in... What? And it was the same with that guy. Don't I go on, eh? Oh, it's 700. Hello. Um, I'm going to start again. Good evening, Tom. I well, said good morning. And I hope you're all right. But don't put the phone down on me until I'm finished, please, will you? Tom. I can't promise that. <laughs> well, you said I was commanding before, but I wasn't really. You bullied me. Listen, let no, me finish. No, I, I'm listen. Only, I, no, I'm, I'm only human. I know you are, so am I. Now, uh, let me you're, finish, You're so please. relentless. Yeah, but, well, let me finish. And I also Fishes. wanted to thank you for uh, letting me play my grandson's music on the wireless the other night, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't have time to thank you. You cut me off, and that hurt me. And I had to ring you back, and I can't say I'm sorry because you, you said, oh, nobody must say they're sorry, didn't you? I can't remember. Yeah, you did, Tom. It was um, one night last week. Right. Yeah. I've got the paper here, so you're all right for a minute. So, anyway, whereabouts were you up Durham? Whereabouts was I up Durham? Yeah, you said that you you kind of come from there. Well, they're Geordies, my father's side of it. Well, yeah, but the Geordies come from Newcastle End. Is that where he came from? Wall's End boy is. Yeah. Yes. Because I come from Stanley, myself. I was wondering. Wondering what? Where you, where you were from then, since yes. it was obviously of interest to you. Yes, Dudley. Yes. It's not far from Newcastle, about 20 minutes on the bus. What shall we do with our life? Well, I don't have a very good one. <laughs> well, I don't know anybody who thinks they do. Everybody's a bit duressed. I'll just add, I'm like, I mean... Even Richard Branson, I bet, if you really sat him down, he'd say, oh... Oh, it, well... I don't think money helps, do you? Well, what shall we do then? What shall we be doing with our lives? Supposing we're starting out, supposing we're we're 22. Oh, I wish I was. Why? What would you do different? I don't think I'd do anything different. Well, what would be the point of living it all over again then? Yeah, but I'd just like to be 22 again. For what? Well, oh, then I, I'd be able to get around better. For I'll what? I'll get that operation on me hip. 
I'm all right, like, you know, but... Have you learned? What age are you? Me, 73. Yeah. What have you picked up, then? That's eh? worth... What have you picked up about life that's worth that's worth passing on? Nothing, really. Why would that be, then? Too well, busy? I don't know, really. Too busy? Well, did I'm you, worth did, did, you, life. did you ever think that life might be a, a passage of the spirit? No. No? Did anybody say to you that perhaps... Perhaps we're here for 70 or 80 years because that's how long it takes and during that time... Who well, knows? I thought it was 70. And I'm, in, I'm having a bit of extra now, aren't I? It was three, court, three score and ten you're supposed to live. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, this what... is a mob. <laughs> yeah. Is it what would you like to talk about, then? What do you talk Some... about? Something, and something, I'll something, should we talk about something jolly? Yeah, go on. Like. What would that be, then? What's jolly? Well, what makes me happy is the grandchildren. Yes. Yeah, I've got five grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Do you ever look at them and think they're going to get very old one day and their hips will go? Do you ever wonder what that will be like for them? Oh, I hope they do. Well, they will do. They're going to get old and die. Do you ever look at them? Oh, and think... no. I don't think about that. Why not? Not for the little ones. But I know, I know you don't want to, but I sometimes have to think about that in my children because... How many have you got? I've got two boys, and when I decided oh, yeah? that they were going to... Yes. When I decided they were going to come here and be here, right, I took that decision for them. That for, for all the joy they'd bring me, I had to remember that they will experience a life which will have just as much suffering as anybody else's, and I'd chosen that for them. Oh. And who was I to choose that for them? Who was I to just go, oh, I'll have a couple of lads... And they can find out it sucks when it sucks. It doesn't suck all the time, but when it sucks, they can find out it sucks as well. Well, they've all got to find out the road way, haven't they? I know, but who am I to say that they they should come here and have to find out it sucks? I don't know, sure. Well, people don't think, do they? They just go, oh, yes. no, yeah. I mean, but people just get on with their life, don't they? Well, why do they do that? Why don't they stop and think sometimes? Why get on well, with I your life? I suppose they do, but... Well, I don't think they do. You never got a chance, did you? Nobody taught you. <sighs> the way no, but I had a good life with my parents. Yeah. I mean, I had good parents. Good. And I'm a good parent to my children. And I suppose you're a good parent to your children. I don't know. I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thanks for your call. Okay, that, 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 listen. No. If I call... Yes. Oh, please. What? <laughs> If I call again, I'll have an easier question for you. <laughs> oh, eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. The telephone call. Line five live on Talksport. Can you better that? Hello. Can Hello. you mean? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, I can... read a comment on what that man was saying about Germany. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well now. Excellent. Um, Can I suggest I, you turn your radio down? Oh, sorry. Not at all. I would like to comment on what that man had to say about Germany. It's very difficult for me to understand what he was saying about Germany. Well, my answer to him is that the Germans got exactly what they asked for. Well, I'm not sure what the point was that he was making, really. He tried to make out that they were starving at the end of the war. So uh, there were a lot more people. A lot of people were starving during the war when they were thinking ships. Yes. You get me? Yes, I do. I think you're, if I may say so, you might be confusing the Nazi regime who ordered the ships to sink the ships with German children and elderly people who played no part in what they the Nazi... They gave full support of the war when Hitler got into power. Not full support. That's inaccurate. I'm sorry, yes. but they got in by a majority vote, didn't he? Yes, exactly. But that's not everybody, is it? What about the people who didn't vote for Hitler? Well, I mean... It's... What about the ma woman who's, who, who, who I met when I went to Royal Ascot, who was a bog cleaner at Ascot, whose father was imprisoned by the Nazis for nine years in a concentration camp, a German, because he'd resisted Hitler? What about him? How many were there of them? What about him I'm talking about? What about him? How? What he about... Oh, you don't... Know, him as the rest of them. Oh, he was another German, was he? Ah, uh, yes, he, he was. was There's only one good German and that's a dead one. You then? 
Is that supposed to be funny? Do you think you're a no, character? No, it's the truth. It was invented in 1918. Do you think you're a bit of a character coming out with things like that? Away you go. I'd like to apologise to any German listeners, or indeed any listeners. I'd like to apologise apologize to God that it got broadcast. I would like to apologise to um, Nelson Mandela, uh, just generally. And I would like to apologise to uh, Bill Clinton. I think it's very unfair that they're thinking of persecuting him further over Monica Lewinsky. Of course he lied and said he didn't have her. Any husband would. There wasn't a president who said, no, I didn't have it off with my secretary on the office floor. That was a husband who didn't want his wife to know, surely, for goodness sake. Just leave it alone. I'd have lied under those circumstances. Anybody in their right minds would have lied under those circumstances. Leave him alone. He's been a bloody good president. He's been a hoot. Line six, you're live on Talk Sport. Good morning. You know, uh, these people, uh, I, I can't get around them, really. Uh, no. Well, you know, we all make our own way through this world in our own way, and we all do it alone because you can get as close as you like to a human being. You're never anywhere near as close to them as you are to yourself. So we're alone, and we struggle through it, and we, we create lots of little um, props and, and support mechanisms to, uh, to, to help us just struggle through to the end of it, which is always pretty miserable, the end of it. And that's what we do, and we know we've got it coming, and we know we do those things as well. And, and you have to. Really, quite splendid. No, I'd quite like, if I had about two or three days left, I'd like to ring one or two women who missed their chance. They didn't exactly turn me down, but they didn't, you know, didn't, they didn't meet me halfway. Should we put it like that? You know what I'm saying here. You probably don't, actually. I'm not sure if I do. But I know who they are, and I just wanted to say, to, I want an opportunity to say to them, look, you know, you've absolutely and utterly missed the boat now because I am going to be worm food in a couple of days. And uh, I'm not in a position really to round the whole thing off for you. <laughs> I'll get a funny look from next door. I don't know what I'm talking about either. I've got a clue. Fantastic. Sometimes start some sentences, you don't know where it's going to end. A bit like that one. Oh eight seven hundred. It's an image, doesn't it, of this person living in a rickety old house with wooden stairways and his mad aunt with high cheekbones and staring eyes has the upstairs floor. She paces in the night and sometimes plays the piano. Something terrible happened to her in the late 60s, but no one talks about it. Occasionally, she phones Poland. That happened to me once. I had a landlord who lived above me. And he said to me, you don't mind me walking around in the middle of the night, do you? I often have to phone France. And I said, no, that's fine. And then he went to France and he was axed to death in his caravan. They nearly guillotined his son for it. Do you remember that? It was in Brighton. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? No. The Cartland Affair, it was called. He was my landlord. Do you not remember? No. You're probably too young. How old do you think I am? I've got you down as about 23. 21. 21, that's close. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Not at all. My pleasure. The line two, you're live on Talk Sport. Hello. <sighs> oh, God. Hi, Toy. Hey. Yeah, hi there. Um, called you earlier. I promise this is the last time I'm going to phone you, mate. But... Some of your callers, of, uh, a couple of your callers at least, have suggested that uh, you haven't answered my questions or anything earlier on this evening. So uh, I'm not going to give you the opportunity to answer the same questions again. But what I want to do finally, and I promise you, I'm not going to phone you again. I want you to leave your radio show. He's really boring, this guy, isn't he? He is. I, 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 some of the nutcases are, are, aren't as sad as this guy. You don't like being cruel, do you, Paul? You're such a nice man. But, I mean, he's a serious... I'm exasperated. No, I'm not exasperated. He's a really sad man. He's got nothing nothing in his life except trying desperately to be annoying, and he can't do it. You compare the panache 
and the wit of the voodoo man with this unfortunate Scotsman. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's not light and shade because shade has some depth. But this fella, is he still going on? Are you still going on? No, I'm just waiting on you stopping, Tommy. Well, um, I'm, 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 I, keep it interesting, can you? This is the art of it. Can you well, keep it interesting? Well, the point is, Tommy, at least two of your callers have suggested that I come back, back on. Yeah, no, and, re uh, and repeating yourself uh, isn't, No, I just said to you that I wasn't repeating myself, Tommy. Can you lift it? Look, look, your problem is you're boring. Yeah, I know I'm boring. Ah, well, then go away and, and bore... <laughs> unknown just don't bird. Just feel that. <laughs> the unknown woman. But uh, ah. getting, getting back to it, what... Obviously, you yourself have had uh, an interesting life, according to what I hear, if I, all that I hear. It, it's all uh, true. It is all what, true. What would you, what would, who would you like to come back as? John Lennon. Line six. Good morning. You're live on Talk Sport. Yeah, morning. I was just going to tell you that just into him yesterday, it was playing about uh, ridiculing people with religious beliefs. Well, you are talking to Tommy. You're live on air, straight okay. through. Screenless show. Yeah, I'm looking at, uh, listening to you yesterday, yep. I'm just wondering why you put, pulled people down for their religious beliefs. Don't, that's not what I do, that's what you heard, but that's your problem, that's not what I do. No, I'm not, I'm not saying the problem, I'm just saying, uh, do you have any beliefs on spiritualism? Do, could you say that more clearly for me? Spiritualism. Spiritualism? Yeah. It depends any... what, well, it depends what you mean by spiritualism, because I've always found everybody means something, everybody means, understands it differently. Well, I've been to the Spiritualist Church, uh, National Spiritualist Union Church, and people have been there that I didn't even know before I went in there. And that often been... happens when you go to new places. Yeah, um, but they came up and they came to me and told me things about my family, my relatives that had uh, died and things that had happened. Do you think that's a coincidence or... Is there something... I'm not prepared to, to, to go one way or the other on what you've told me. My, my, my wife had something happen to, to her, which involved a spiritualist, which she says impressed her, and my, my, I like my wife enough to give it another... They've handed over 27. <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? How long have you been listening this evening? Since 10 o'clock last night. Nine hours? If I come back as somebody else, mm. uh, of course, my answer was me, because I'm reasonably happy being me. Uh, but having some deep thought about it, um, not one of your normal, usual thing. I'd like to go a bit more futuristic, mm -hmm. like somebody like um, that guy off Star Trek, Mr. Picard. It wouldn't that be a great life? Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Come I, back. Uh, I'd want to further my relationship with Councillor Troy if I was Captain Picard, though. Yes, now that would be a very interesting one. Oh, baby! Yes. She is a fine <laughs> creature, isn't she? What about her that was uh, bald? Can you remember her? Oh, what? Um, that was from one of the films. Yeah. What's her name? Oh, can't remember. Oh, yes. uh, if you shut up, I'll remember it. She's in Cheers. Oh, you can talk now. What's the girl's name in Cheers who was bald in Star Trek? I didn't even know she, she plays was in Rebecca Cheers. in Cheers. Yes. Her. Is yes. that who you're talking about? Yes, I do believe it is. Yes. Very tasty. Oh, we should certainly. Let's drink to her, shall we? We certainly will. Cheers. To the unknown woman. <laughs> to the unknown woman. To the, the tomb to the of the unknown woman. woman. I'd go there, wouldn't you? I'd <laughs> kneel at the tomb of the un yes. I would lay a wreath. <laughs> yes, we would definitely <laughs> lay a wreath. The tomb <laughs> of the um, time back as being. Um, I made something up and I said it was something like uh, Schwarzkopf's fundamental flaw in mathematics. And I used that to illustrate it. Mm. And I said, you know, this the fact that there is a fundamental flaw in basic mathematics proves... Will this mean, will this mean planes would drop out of the sky? Absolutely. It proved that one day, you know, the universe will collapse. Exactly. It's just a, there's a hole yeah. in mass. That's what I proved. Well, Schwarzkopf did. Yeah. You know, and people fell for it. I didn't realise it was um, that old... You, but you know everything, don't you? You know all jokes. And... I virtually know everything, yeah. Mm. What do you want to know? Um, well, I just want to know the answer to that, really. <laughs> well, there isn't uh, one, is there? No. Well, so some people would try to, but 
It's beyond me. Yeah. It's beyond me. Yeah. But uh, that's it, okay. All right. Uh, there's enough to play on mine for more then. Well, you've got £25 in the till, £2 in the guy's pocket, and £3 in the punter's pocket. Yeah. That's 30 isn't it? Yeah, but that's, that's working it backwards, isn't it? No, working no, no, that's, that's working it the same way, dealing with mm. where, where the money actually is. Yeah, but it still doesn't take away the fact that these people are paid £9 each, and that's, that's £27 they've paid, mm. and that's £2 in the pocket. So that's still only 29 isn't it? Mm. They've paid 25 But they've paid £9 each. No, they've paid 25 nine pounds each if you were if you were having that meal yes. you would have paid nine pounds wouldn't you yes and there's three of them yes 27 or another radio station it must be awful to be boring i've never known what it's like uh, have you uh no no well said that was nice and dead live on talk sport hello yeah hello tommy it's um it's Rob. I was just wondering if you can uh, pick your brains for a minute and think where you play my mind. Um, three people in a restaurant. Okay. Hello? Yes. Sorry, yeah, three nice. people in a restaurant. Yeah. They all um, had a set meal of £10. Yeah. And uh, the waiter comes over, collects £10 from each person. Yeah. Not a joke, by the way. No, um, no, no. That, I, that's been rattling around in my mind for forty years or so. This one. Oh, have you heard it? Have you? Well, yes, please. It's a good one, isn't it? Well, yeah, yes, so, it is. I, I don't know the, the answer. The, the waiter comes along, yes. sets the ten pounds for each person, yes, and yes. takes it to the cashier. This isn't. And the cashier says, um, yeah. "Oh, I'm pretty good today. Give them five pounds back." Mm -hmm. So he's taken the five pounds back to the uh, three people, and he thinks, mm -hmm. "Well, how can they divide five pounds?" So I put. Two pounds in my pocket, yeah. and I'll give them a pound each. That's, that's three pounds. That's twenty-seven pound. So that's three nines, twenty-seven pounds. Two pounds in his pocket. Two pounds in his pocket. Yeah, twenty-nine pounds. That's it. Where's the other quid gone? So where's that pound gone? All I will say is that if you do say that to some people, they'll get very frustrated with it, and they'll go, "Well, oh, that they'll go, oh, that a bit, that's it. That you're simply looking at it from the wrong point of view." But then they can't. We're, we're in a pub, and we we even had to hold a barmate. Yeah. Well, you know, trying yeah. to add it, it's, it's crazy. Well, I presented it on the radio uh, uh, some.